Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, October 2nd of 2019. I think it's a Wednesday. It is a Wednesday. And this is just going to be a general blog, and I hope I don't go crazy on some subject and uh, go rambling for an hour. I'm going to try not to. Um, There's a CNN story that uh, about, maybe it's not, I guess it's an opinion, yeah. Okay, it's an opinion piece. Uh, and it talks about the Supreme Court justices here in the United States and should there be term limits. And it does a really good job because it uh, uh, discusses uh, different ways that things could be changed you know, by a constitutional amendment, which is very, very difficult to get done. And uh, just different ways of things could be done where uh, at a certain age, you know, a Supreme Court justice would, uh, I don't want to say let go, but, you know, they could move to a senior status or to something where then they wouldn't, uh, practice, they wouldn't be on the United States Supreme Court, but they would still retain their salary, that which can't be cut, and they would could work on other courts and special, you know. They, type of, they talk about, I think, all of the options. And uh, A few years ago, I'm not sure how long ago, my, I uh, was so convinced about the United States Constitution that I really didn't want it messed with in any way. Uh, you know, I really didn't want uh, constitutional amendments and things, except I guess I thought there was sometimes that some part should be changed. Or, but basically, I didn't want it touched. I have now come to the opinion that uh, it ought to be touched. There ought to be amendments made, or you know, changed, and things uh, because it's just we have this bickering and fighting here in the United States over the, you know, Supreme Court and over different uh, decisions and over uh, amendments to the Constitution and just, it is just, I think it's, it's time to go in there and reasonably, responsibly, religiously uh, improve the Constitution because now we can see all of the problems that you know that we have with it now i haven't thought through every one of the every part of the constitution and ever one thing i would like i've talked about this before well, i did talk about that's one of the first things was uh well one of the first things i would well there's just i, I can't say first because we've got so many political problems here <clears throat> one thing i would like to see a simple thing the one thing i would like to see is have uh, the term of the president uh, not be a four-year term, <clears throat> be a six-year term. And we do have a constitutional, you know, amendment that uh, <clears throat> a president uh, can only serve for two terms. Uh, I would like to see it one six-year term, and then the president can't serve anymore, you know, can't be elected or served, and now he could be um, you know, run for the United States Senate, or of course that'd be a step, to, you know. But or I would be willing to have something like uh, the an ex president of the United States who isn't impeached, you know, uh, and removed from office uh, could would become a United States senator for life. Uh, and now should he have voting rights as that, or should he just be allowed to speak? I'm not, I mean, those things can be decided. So there are some things that, but, uh, that's one thing. The problem, I don't want to, I don't want to go into all this. I, I've gone into it before. The problem with, uh, the, the current system of a president's, you know, certain being elected for four years, and then he can try to get reelected for the next, for another four years is that as soon as a president gets elected, 
for that four-year term, you know, and he's has said, you know, I'm going to do this and I want to do this and I want to change this or whatever. As soon as he gets elected, it's like, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, you know, I told the American people that I wanted such and such. But if I push for that now, then I probably won't be reelected. So let's not push on. And it's as soon as he gets elected, it's like, oh, wait a minute, we can't do this because I want to get reelected. And if if you just had it, okay, you have a six year term. Go, you know, go at it, do it, because you're not going to be reelected. You're not going to serve again. So there's stuff like that. So there's a lot of things now that I've decided, yes, that it would be good to fix, you know. Uh, and the Second Amendment would be one, but that's going to make people's heads explode, <clears throat> you know. Uh, have changed the Second Amendment, you know, uh, on that's gun control, you know. Uh, well, it's uh, allowing the citizens to own, you know, guns. And uh, that, I, I think, we should, because of the modern age, because of the power of assault rifles and that type of stuff, I, I think it should be, since it's, if this was a brand new nation or some other nation, yeah, you know, don't have a constitutional amendment that every Tom, Dick, and Harry can have a gun, and it's a constitutional right, you know. But since we have this history, and uh, I mean, to our histories, exact, you know, like we uh, gun smoke and uh, Dodge City and. Uh, you know, cowboys and westerns and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in the early days back, you know, Dodge City and those cities, there was gun control. You know, you came to town, you know, after a while, and maybe when the town first started, you know, and, uh, but after a while, there was gun control. You come to the town, you turn your gun in to the sheriff or the marshal or whatever, and you get the gun when you leave. There was that type of, that, you know, that type of stuff. But that's not what you see in our Western movies, you know, and TV shows and all that type of stuff. But uh, so I'd like to see the thing change so there's no uh, no doubt about it that, uh, yes, you can. You have a right to have, you know, a firearm or and or, and or firearms for your protection, but uh, you can't have military type of weapon. Uh, you know, you can have a shotgun, you can have a, you know, 30 six rifle and that type of stuff, but you can't have military type weapons that have, you know, 20 round clips or 60 round clips that, you know, just spew bullets out everywhere, you know, they go through walls and everything else. So I'd like to see, and I'm not saying that my opinion of the way it should be, I mean, and it was if it's an amendment, it should be hearings should be held, and uh, you know, just people's comments and uh, everything put in. But I'm just saying that yeah, I think changes should be made. So this is an interesting article on. Uh, it used to be that. Well, I mean, I, we can think back into history when the entire Supreme Court, because of, you know, was filled by old white men. And uh, they were all uh, from the South, and they were all slaveholders. I'm, you know, so just because of the our history and what have you, and the way the you know system works, and being appointed by you know, and you had to you know balance the you know. But I'd I'd like to see I'd like to see some changes made, but I. I didn't think, you know, a few years ago that I would be wanting something like that. Um, <clears throat> I, I noticed again, I, I tried to show you and it didn't show very well, but I, I see now that uh, I was correct that uh, YouTube is not updating the number of views instantaneously when somebody views something, you know. So I, I did notice that again, because I I went here someplace and you know just the other day or whatever and and 
for my uh, what do you think of the Facebook horizon video it showed like 16 views and but then I clicked and went over someplace and it shows you know like 58 views or something so it does it doesn't matter a lot I guess but I just mentioned it because I happen to notice it and because YouTube uh, to YouTube put out a video for well, everybody can view it, but it's for <coughs> YouTube producers. So, hey, and telling them, say, hey, by the way, we're not going to be updating instantaneously for your views, but it will be. They will be updated with the numbers eventually. So, I, I finally, I'll try. Won't try to show that to you again because when I tried to uh, show it to you the other day, I. It looked like it. Uh, I wasn't able to show it. Here's a. And I'd forgotten about this. Uh, is your ID? This is for the United States. Is your ID good enough to travel? It may not be <clears throat> next year, <clears throat> one year from now. And uh, I had forgotten about it. But I think that I was actually in, oh, wait a minute, this, this was passed in, uh, when was it passed? Uh, anyway, 47 out of the 50 states currently have, you know, the real ID thing taken care of. It says here that uh, New Jersey, Oklahoma, and Oregon at this point have not uh, come up with uh, real ID compliant cards. Now, when was this that, well, I see it someplace else. And I'll be, uh, <clears throat> so starting, you know, if you, <clears throat> starting October 1st <clears throat> of this next year, if you are, a U.S. citizen, uh, or anybody, I guess anybody in the United States, uh, you have to have a compliant card. Uh, I think it was 2005. Let me see here. Okay, yeah. It was. This is a Texas state uh, site. Uh, I think I was in Miami then. I spent about five years in Miami, and I, I can't remember now exactly. I think I was in Miami when I read about this Real ID Act. That was no, 2005. That's, uh, that's a long time ago for, you know. And at this point, 2019, we still have three United States, you know, three states that do not have compliant, which means uh, in a year's time, if if you don't have a compliant card, then uh, and you go to the airport or to a federal building or to a federal park, to all different types of places, um, you're screwed. You're not going to get in. You're. Not, I'm not sure what they, you know, what they're going to do with you know. Maybe if you know about this and realize it, uh, maybe you'll have. You know, uh, your birth certificate in your pocket and uh, two or three other things to back you up. And and uh, then maybe you'll get through after a delay, after your flight has already left. Maybe you'll be able to catch the next flight. And uh, I remember, and I think it was Texas was one of them because a bunch of states then, you know, because it was states were slow to. Uh, I think it was Texas, but since I was in Florida, maybe it was Florida, but I remember a whole bunch of states. A whole bunch of states said, you know, we're saying, uh, "Fuck you, we have our this is a state driver's license." and or a state ID card and 
We don't care about the federal government. We're not going to change our cards. Uh, to hell with the federal government. This is the state of Texas, you know, and we're not changing it. And I thought, eh, you'll be changing it. And uh, so that was 2005. Here it is. Three, at least three states are not compliant, and they have one year now to become compliant. But I didn't know about. Okay, I forget. I forget when I came to. Texas, but when I came to Texas, uh, I came with a Florida idea, state card, you know, uh, driver's license, um, and like an idiot, I was here for many years, and finally my card expired, and then you have a grace period, and I, I didn't, you know. I didn't go to the uh, Texas Department of, you know, and get my driver's license, you know, and get, get a, a Texas driver's license. I went when it expired, and uh, and I thought, and I was having arthritis problems, hard to turn my head, and hurts, and to look back, and all that kind of stuff. And by then, I think I did not have a car here. So I just got a, a state ID card, and uh, then I had forgotten uh, about the card being compliant and all that type of stuff. So I just took my card out of my billfold, my state Texas state ID card that I have had for uh, many years now, and I see it does not have a star on it, and this tells me here that uh, the Texas Department of Public Safety is committed to protecting the citizens of Texas by only licensing individuals who are properly identified and can demonstrate their ability to safely operate a vehicle on public roads. The United States Congress passed the Real ID Act in 2005 in response to the terrorist attacks on 9-11. The Real ID requires states to adopt and implement uniform standards for the issuance and production of state-issued driver's license and identity cards, so forth and so on. Because the 9-11, then we found that I think some of those people, they were able to get a state driver's license or state ID with no, it varied, you know, some places that, um, you know, you had to have certain things in order to get it. And uh, other places, they just other states, you could just apply. Hey, I got it. I think you could go to another state with, with your card and then get it changed in the other states. You know, and it was just, it was a mess. So this was passed for security reasons. And uh, then back then, too, I think I was saying, for the first time, because I would have objected to it before, is now we, you know, United States citizens, and the federal government should issue everybody a ID card, state of the art. I don't know whether it has to have a, you know, hologram in it or a biochip or, a, you know, not something they inject in you, you know, or whatever, not tattoo on you or something, but everybody should have an ID card that really, when you go to the airport, you know, back then I was saying, you know, okay, you should have an ID card. If, if you go to the airport and, you want to fly, and they scan the card, computer working, you know, and uh, red light flashes or something or other, and airport security police and everything come over. Uh, Mr. Howard, uh, step over here, please. Well, my plane is, you know, leaving here, you know. Step over in the room here. Okay, uh... We have some concerns here. We see that you bought a uh, ton of uh, fertilizer, and you bought, uh, I don't know, you know, 500 gallons of uh, diesel fuel, or it could be, in, you know, whatever the computer is set up to, you know, to look for, you know, which 
So I think we actually need, you know, unfortunately, and I know that goes, there'll be a ton of people, and I'm not saying they're wrong. There's going to be a ton of Americans that would, that would say, no, I, you know, I, no, I don't want the, the data to go on the card that I just, uh, you know, just checked out of a psych hospital for a month, and now I'm at the airport wanting to, you know. Now, I'm not saying that these things are, you know, you can't fly. You know, the person that says, you know, they call them in to, you know. Now, some people, you know, some of the people you call in and say, uh, Mr. Howard, sit down. I see that you bought, uh, you know, a ton of uh, fertilizer. You're going to have some of these because I've dealt with people, you know, like this. Not people that bought fertilizer, but, you know, people that I talked to or whatever. And you're going to have somebody that's going to say, yeah, fuck yeah, I, I bought it. I'm making a bomb. I have a bomb right now on my farm. You know, I use half of that fertilizer for my cows or my pigs or whatever. And the other I've made into a bomb that I have sitting out there now and that I'm ready to use against the state of Missouri or the state of Texas or state of Florida or I'm going to do such. You'll have some people who are, that's just like when I complained about uh, that we needed real background checks back when the, when the government was saying, okay, we're going to do you know, we're going to have checks where you go to the gun store and they just run your card and uh, your ID card. And uh, if there's no warrants for your arrest, uh, you get your permit to, you know, you get uh, you get to buy a gun. And I said, no, they need real background, you know, real background checks. The police, you know, if you go, you want to buy a gun other than, let's say, Somebody can buy a shotgun, somebody can buy a rifle, and maybe even somebody can buy a handgun. But really, it probably should be handgun, you know. But anyway, whatever the. But you go and uh, uh, then the local police, oh, you want to buy a, uh, you know, assault rifle. Okay, well, we've got your information here, and. Uh, Hopefully this is going to, we'll know in, here's our phone number, you know. This is the gun store, you know. Uh, and the uh, police will be checking. And then the, you know, the police, the sheriff's department, whichever, how it's set up, you know. State, state patrol, local sheriff's department, police department, whatever. Uh, and they do the computer check. Oh, let's see, okay. No warrants for the arrest. Uh, not on, you know, okay. And then... It doesn't have to be a police officer. It could be uh, somebody who is not a police officer, but could be a security company, or it could be in the police department. They have, you know, the police department has uh, people who do, who are not commissioned police officers, but uh, do parking control and can issue tickets and that kind of stuff. This could be a different, you could save money, you know unless, you know, you'd have less training. You could have these investigators who are, you know, uh, work for the police department, or it could be, wouldn't have to be, you know, it could be contract people or whatever, <laughs> provided they're competent and, know, you know, and then they go out and they, uh, you wanted to buy a gun, so they talk to your employer, they talk to your next door neighbors, uh, they talk to your, uh, let's assume you were a guy, they talk to your wife or girlfriend, you know, because you're going to have, you know, some of these are going to go out and uh, you're going to talk to the, and, and you don't have to go out and say, uh, you know, Jim Howard, he wants a gun. He wants a gun really bad and we want to check with you to see, you know, and then you're going to have the wife or the ex-wife or neighbor, somebody's going to say, he, he fucking said, he objected to such and such where my car was parked or he he said he was going to kill me he said he was going to buy a gun and he was going to fucking kill me you know you're going to have you're actually going to have some of that type of stuff happen and uh so i i think we should have real background you know background checks but now back to the this id 
I, I live right next to a, actually it's a reserve base, air, an air, a, uh, air base used by the United States Air Force for reserve flights and other stuff, and by the Navy Reserve for their fighter pilots and by the, uh, see, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and there's probably some other units out there. So you get this noise occasionally. So uh, back to this federal, I'm not sure when I got my, now my uh, state ID card, but I checked, it does not have the star. It's not approved. Uh, it, it won't pass. So according to this, I guess, well, you know, after it talks about after a renewal date or whatever. So I'm thinking that what I could do, because I don't want to, I'm not, you can count, I don't fly very often, especially now with prostate problems, a bladder retention problem, and all types, you know, I don't fly very often. I haven't fl flown very, you know. Um, but I don't want something to come up, family emergency or something, and I go to the airport and, uh, whoops, you can't fly. Because one thing, too, that I didn't, you know, for until I came to Texas and went to get, and I, like an idiot, let my, well, when I should have, when I came to Florida and I knew I was going to, from Florida here, I legally should have just gone, I should have gone to the, and got a uh, Texas driver's license. The only problem is I, uh, you know, I see I left Missouri. I went to Orlando, Florida. I was there a while. I came to uh, Texas and uh got a Texas I, uh, ID or driver's license or whatever. And then I went for five years to Miami, Florida, and I had to get a new one. And uh, I also, of course, got a, well, when I was in Orlando, I got a, had to go through the training and I got a Florida private officer's uh, commission. Then I came to Texas and I got a, uh, Texas, you know, and private officers, or whatever they're called here, guards, you know, I got certification for that because I was working at the, for a contract company, providing security at uh, Love Field FAA Control Tower. Well, then I went to Miami after a while, and so then I had to, and I already had had a Florida license, but I, but I went there, so I went there, and then I had to uh, get a new Florida private officer's commission and had to go through the training again. And, it, you know, so so when I came here, I wasn't 100% sure if I was going, so I wanted to keep my Florida license and uh, the whole, so, but anyway, I should have gone, but I still wouldn't have got a, a compliant ID card because they didn't have them then. But um, I checked and my card isn't compliant. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to, and it says here, I guess if, maybe online, maybe I can, uh, I can't remember now, I read it, but um, so for people in the United States, hey, uh, you better check and make sure your license or state ID has this gold star on it and that it's, you know, that it's approved or you're going to go, something's going to happen. You're going to go to the airport and it may be like an emergency, you know, your mother or your father or somebody, family or something happens or, you know, or you just want to, you just, you know, just think some, you know, some guy gets engaged, you know, and they get married and they going to have a honeymoon and they're just married and they're hot to trot and they go to the airport and the uh, your your bride they just scan her card and they scan your card and sorry you need to we need to have more ID you know more information about you
So this is something to uh, look into. My God, it was, this thing was passed in 20, and I understand, of course, I mean, as soon as they passed this thing in 2005, of course, they didn't pass it out of, it's not like, we just passed a law. I mean, there were hearings and all types of things. But anyway, 2005, here it is, 2019, and uh, anyway, I'm going to have to uh, get an updated card. I've never had a passport in my life. I mean, if I <clears throat> if I got a passport, but then I don't want to be, you know, your driver's license or state ID, you just stick it in your billfold, passport, you know. But uh, because my daughter, who's a Swedish citizen and a United States citizen, I think her, one or both of her passports have now expired. And so she needs to get, you know, she has a driver's license, you know, for Texas. <clears throat> but she also needs to get those passports taken care of in case something comes, you know, comes up, but, so, um, my God, Trump, I, well, it's not, it was, it wasn't just this, but, you know, Trump is, uh, and we know now from <clears throat> people that he works with that he screamed at, the, at them and was telling the people that he wanted uh, migrants to be uh, shot in the legs that would slow them down. I guess he didn't have to. Didn't, he didn't have to worry about shooting the migrant children in the legs. He could just shoot mom and dad in the legs, and then of course the migrant children would, you know, they they would grab their moms and dads and be laying there, so they they would be easy to pick up. And then he was wanting to put snakes and alligators in a trench along, you know, a moat along the border. My God. I haven't really checked this out, but I have, that's a thing where uh, I'm one of those people that have a whole bunch of uh, tabs open, and then I'll hear the, uh, one of them, uh, the video will start up and it'll be gone. And which one that, so I guess there's now a, uh, a Google Chrome thing you can click on. I haven't read the entire thing. Uh, so, so you don't have to go through and, in fact, I was just doing that yesterday. Something, something started and I had, which one is the, you know, I have to click until I find it. So that's something. Uh, This I agree because I saw a uh, first. You know, you, when you see this, well, if some town in Iowa wants to have colored paint, you know, on, on their thing or whatever. But when I saw uh, like an aerial view sort of, of of the thing, no, I I think you need to comply with, you know, the standards so that people are not driving down a road. What in the hell? You know, when they see, uh, they see this, you're coming through your town, you know, and it's like, what does this, you know, mean? It, it, so uh, I think city of Ames, Iowa, they said, we're not changing it. I'm sure with the federal, with the government situation the way it is, it's just, uh, of course, how big is Ames, Iowa? But I'm sure what it is, the federal government can just say, uh, well, you're not getting any highway and street funding from the uh, federal government. And the the mayor and the aldermen and everybody will be out, they'll be out there with brushes, you know, putting it so, it's, so you have the white lines and whatever you're supposed to have real quick. That's one way the you know, with the government, the federal government can, uh, let's see. I am 78 years old, I believe. I have never smoked a marijuana cigarette, never ever. 
I've confiscated, you know, I've stopped people and had, uh, uh, I found a bag of, you know, like I remember more than once, but once at a hospital, I'm out walking through the parking lot and somebody had dropped their bag of marijuana out uh, in the parking lot. I guess they were reaching for a handkerchief or doing something, or maybe they were stuffing it down because they were going to the hospital and it fell in the parking lot. And uh, once I was called an x-ray in uh, a hospital and to help the x-ray tech because the person was drunk and I had to pull, well, one, to make sure the person didn't cause trouble, but I also had to pull their shoulders down so they could get the x-ray of all their, make sure none of their cervical spines were fractured or anything like that. And when I was helping, a bag of marijuana fell on the uh, on the table. Once I got called, it wasn't marijuana, but once I was called to go to x-ray at St. Joseph Hospital back in, oh my God, uh, Uh, 1997 or 98 or something like that. And I went up and went into the x-ray department. It was actually on the sixth floor. That I, it was an old hospital. Uh, normally you wouldn't have your x-ray on the sixth floor. But anyway, I went in there and the uh, x-ray tech went and I said, uh, what can I help you with? And uh, he says, that patient over there has a gun. It was patient was laying on the table, you know, with the x-ray thing up above him, everything. I said, uh, how do you know? He says, there's, the, look at that, you can see the gun, you know, in the x-ray. So, so, um, well, we know the audio is working okay, right? You know, this, uh, I actually, I, I think I mentioned that you, this would, I put underneath the, my uh, Mia, my underneath my uh, YouTube video that this was not available anymore. Uh, actually, it is a Sadie's A6 for like because it depends on when you go to Amazon. And because I went there several times, and it showed that it was available and you could buy it, and then I went there again to get the link and it showed that it wasn't available, but. Uh, you, I see where you you can actually get it, which is surprising. And of course, they Sadie's issued a whole bunch of them. I mean, it was like bang, 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 bang. Uh, I think they sent me probably six or seven uh, headsets to be reviewed, and I reviewed them uh, on uh, Amazon's. You know where you can review products. I mentioned that I was sent the item for free and that I was reviewing it, you know. But And I gave a ton of these headsets away to my my neighbors. I was a ocean to my people. Or was it a river from... Uh, uh, that movie. Oh, I can't remember the name. Anyway, I've used that line a few times. In my life, I have used a few lines, and I don't tell people, you know, from the, like things from The Godfather. I expect people to know. Uh, but I've used a few lines, and one of them, one of the things that I, well, one thing from a kid, and I didn't know that where I picked it up when I was, grade school and whatever, I would, uh, something would be, something would come up and I would say fortunes of war, fortunes of war. And then years and years later, and I didn't know where it came from. It was just something that I used. And uh, I remember my, uh, a cousin of mine came over with some friends and they came in and they said, we, you know, might have, I forget, Forget if I was Jimmy then or if I was probably always Jimmy. Jimmy, we finally figured it out. You saying fortunes of war. And I said, you know, it's in a movie 
such and such a movie or whatever. We just, we were watching and we went, ah, you know. So they came over to tell me. Um, and then I saw a, a cute movie, a movie that I liked. It's not something that somebody's going to, it was a movie. And I think was, I think the name of the movie was, Why Would I Lie About a Thing Like That? But anyway, I was working at a small hospital, security, and we were like family there. It was a small, very small hospital. And I was, you know, like spent a lot, of, I spent a lot of time in the emergency room. And, uh, I mean, I, I never, there's, I worked like 30 plus years at, you know, hospital security. And I never talked about stories from, I, I never talked about the fact that at St. Joe's, St. Joe Hospital that two security officers were uh, shot in the line of duty. I never talked about uh, me forcing the hospital administrator to, to uh, comply with my request to get bulletproof vest and do very, and I, I just never told those things. But in working 11 years at Research Belton Hospital, there was times that I did tell, having nothing to do with hospital security or the, you know, nobody knew that I used to be a welder for years or built railroad trains or I mean, I, but there were a few stories that I did tell, not made up stories, but you know, tr true things. Something would come up and I'd say, <clears throat> oh, and you know, one well, way I told a few of the, a few of these stories and the, the nurses were like, that didn't, you know, that's not, you know, that didn't happen. I said, yeah. Yeah, no, nope, that didn't happen. And uh, anyway, then I saw this movie on TV. Why would I, I think that's the name of? Why would I lie about a thing like that? About a guy who uh, did lie, and he lied about. I'm not talking about a current president, by the way. He lied about things that. Why would you lie about it? You know, and when people would say, nah, and he would say. Well, why would I lie about a thing like that? And the people would go, yeah, a person wouldn't lie about that. Oh, so it must be true. But it was a cute little story. He was separated from, I think his daughter was taken away or something. And anyway, you know, it's a, you know he meets a woman who's a uh, child protection, what do they call those, uh, counselors or whatever. And it ends up he and he doesn't know that he's got his own daughter back in it. But anyway, so then they're, oh no, he was he actually worked for a while as a, uh, and he ends up with his own daughter uh, back in a not in a legal way. He does some paperwork or whatever. But anyway, in this movie, he's. But anyway, so it got to be at this hospital that I worked at for eleven years. Uh, it got to be that uh, the nurses, I would start to say something. A lot of times the nurses a nurse or nurses would say, uh, we don't want to hear one of your, one of your made up stories. And I'd say, it's not a made up, nah, we don't want to hear your made up stories. And then there's <laughs> a few times I went into work and there would be a nurse, <clears throat> a young nurse who was just working in the ER for a week or something, uh, or maybe a little bit longer, uh, from the main hospital and everything, and I'd come into work, and she'd say, oh, uh, you're the one they told me about that make up the stories and tell made up stories. Uh, and I don't, you know, yeah, they told me about you, you know. And uh, so anyway, that got to be, I mean, it got to be, I would, something would come up and I'd say, uh, no, nope, we don't want to hear the. So, so uh, then anyone one day a uh, anyway I was using that expression, 
like, uh, why would I lie about a thing like that? So one day then a nurse came in uh, to work in the emergency room. I mean, regular, she was a, a regular nurse. It, you know, I'd, uh, the shift changed, you know, I would be, sometimes I came in an hour early before the other nurses and sometimes I came in and they had been working for uh, six hours or, you know, what. But anyway, I'm there and the nurse came, and Kathy Parks comes in and says, ah, I was home, you know, watching a movie on television and ha ah, ha, Jim, I saw the movie. Why would I lie about a thing like that? And then the other nurse, what? Hey, you, remember, you know, he says, and we told him, you know, and he says, and it's on a movie. A guy in a movie says it, and ah, I got him, you know. So, uh, how did I get on that subject? But uh, anyway, if you're here in the United States, be sure, and I'm going to have to, oh, that's what I wanted to mention too, by the way on the uh, ID. Uh, my birth certificate, I had a birth certificate. I didn't actually have a birth certificate. Anyway, I had this birth certificate, you know, that's birth certificate or whatever. And I used that when I went to work for the post office. Uh, I went to work when I... Uh, or when I applied for, uh, took the test for uh, Peace Corps, uh, when I took the test for the Federal Protection Officer, uh, all, you know, I used this certificate. I used it in Missouri. I used it in Orlando, Florida. I used it in uh, Texas when I was working for, you know, the FAA control tower security. I used it in uh, Florida or, or whatever. Anyway, I come to, and I, I told you about it. I came here you know, with my Florida driver's license or whatever. Finally, when I go to, you know, and I make sure, okay, I, I need to get, you know, my Florida driver's license has expired. I do not have a, a uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to get a driver's license. I'm going to get a state ID, but I, I don't have an ID of any kind. You know, can't open a bank account. You can't do crap, you know, with that. So, so I make sure I have everything. Okay, I have, you know, here's two receipts. Here are repay, uh, receipts for payments I've made for, you know, electricity and cable service or what. Okay, I have this. I have my birth certificate, of course. And I have these old IDs, you know. I have that in case they want that. Okay, I got everything. So then I go to the, you know, licensing bureau or whatever and take a number. And it's actually ch it changed quite a bit. And, well, things are better now. Uh, you go to these plate one. Of course, it's not going to be the same everywhere. But you go there, you take a card, you know, and then your number on this card. It, you can go sit down and your numbers appear on the, on the thing, and then it'll say serving number, you know, 1220, okay, at windows, you know, or area, whatever. Oh, okay, and you go over and over. So I sit down, real nice lady and everything, and I have all the stuff there and everything, and she takes my birth certificate and says, uh, no, you need a birth certificate. I, oh, that's my birth certificate, you know. Uh, nope. Uh, she said, uh, we see these you know, quite often, not as much as we used to, but we see these quite often. What this is, is the hospital, I think it was, gave you this, you know, gave your parents this certificate as showing that they had applied and, you know, with the, the state, and they had registered your birth, but this is not in a, and so I said, well, okay. And so, thank you. And so I left, took this thing home and looked at it and looked at it. I think down at the bottom little thing that it was something like, you know, something like, oh yeah, you know, the lady's right. So I had to apply uh, 
and I needed it right away for some reason. I got a friend in Missouri, uh, friend forever, a real friend, you know, uh, maybe my only real friend, uh, uh, really nice guy. And, uh, you know, we probably email every day, maybe not every day, but, uh, so anyway, and, uh, I said, oh, I need to get it because, I forget why, if I was flying or I forget what the deal was, something it seems like, and uh, he, I forget exactly how he did it or whatever, he went, I had, maybe I had to fax him something or whatever, I, but he went, you know, he got in his car and uh, drove over to the, because of because he lives in, well, he lives in Kansas City, Missouri area, but he lives in a, you know, there's a, a place close to him that uh, does this type of stuff, and it's, I think it's a licensed agency, I forget, I can't remember, maybe not, maybe it was an actual state, but he went over there and uh, did whatever was necessary, he got it immediately, what I needed, and then he sent it to me on the way home, you know, from, when he left there, he pulled in and uh, sent it to me immediately and I, and I got it and everything and uh, but how did I get on that subject I don't know anyway thank you very much for watching